The government deceived hundreds of black men in that syphilis study for decades, allowing many to die by withholding treatment so doctors could study how the disease ravaged black bodies. That atrocity has shaped the way some black people view doctors and the government. So I reached out to a descendant of one of the men in that syphilis study who now lives in Virginia to get her take on the COVID-19 vaccine. They were human beings. They deserve the dignity and the respect and the care as every human being did. Lily Tyson Head's father, Freddie Lee Tyson, was among the 600 black men deliberately deceived by the United States government in that now infamous syphilis study. And they were so trusting. These were some honest men. And now there's distrust among some in the black community of the new COVID vaccine because of the government's sinister history. They wanted the men to die so that they could figure out how the syphilis affected their bodies. But Head says a key part of the government's deception in the study, withholding the cure to syphilis for hundreds of black men, makes her determined to roll up her sleeve for the COVID-19 vaccine. When the vaccine is available to my group, I plan to take it. My father was denied that opportunity. Denied and lied to for 40 years. Beginning in 1932, a government-led team of doctors recruited hundreds of black men in Macon County, Alabama. Doctors told them they had bad blood that needed to be studied at Tuskegee Institute. In reality, the men had syphilis, a deadly disease. It can be sexually transmitted, but most of the men in the Tuskegee study were born with it like Head's father. So when he found out that he had been in the study, my father was in his 70s. It was to him very disturbing and angry that he had been so deceived and had been told such, you know, such a lie. A lie brought to light in 1972 by Associated Press reporter Jean Heller. Her investigation revealed doctors learned just a few years into the study that penicillin could treat syphilis. Medical doctors deliberately let them die, wanted them to die for what they could discover from their bodies later. Everyone who knew about this and didn't blow the whistle, who that didn't shout to high heaven, this is wrong, is culpable. The government officially apologized in 1997. What the United States government did was shameful. Decades later, the sting of the study's deception remains, casting a shadow of doubt and fear over the government's push to get millions vaccinated to end the COVID-19 pandemic. Is that distrust for you still there to an extent, or are you leaning more on the science? I'm, I'm, I'm leaning on the science and hoping that the government will acknowledge what has happened in the past and why our distrust is so deep. While Head's father didn't die of syphilis, some of the men did or went blind or had severe health problems because the government withheld treatment. And that's why Head is urging the government to do the right thing today. I hope this vaccine will reach everyone, especially those who need it the most, the ones who are left out, the ones who are marginalized. They were denied it. So let's make sure that none of us are denied the vaccine, no matter who we are. Head says the syphilis study descendants have different views on taking the vaccine, but they are on the same page when it comes to educating everyone about what happened in this country through their foundation voices for our fathers. They hope sharing their father's stories will ensure this never happens again. Jessica Larche, News 3.